So let me th thank the organizers for the invitation. Uh, it's uh, the joint work with Carlos Kini and uh, Frank Merle. And uh, I, I gave a general title, but it's uh, going to be more about the energy critical wave equation. Uh, energy critical wave equation. So sorry, I have somebody. which is almost the equation of the uh, talk of David, with an energy critical nonlinearity. So, so x is in Rn, and uh, p is uh, the real variable. Uh, but before going to this equation, I, uh, in my talk, I want to emphasize on, on part of the argument, which is going to be very general. Uh, for nonlinear dispersive equation, and uh, let me give you some examples of nonlinear dispersive equation where this argument will give something, a, a, a small information, but an important information. Uh, it's, uh, for example, NLS focusing NLS. So focusing, I guess, I have to put a minus sign here with a nonlinearity which is between uh, between mass critical and uh, energy critical. And also nonlinear like Gordon equation. So as you know, it's dt square u minus Laplace of u uh, equals, so I want the focusing equation again, with a nonlinearity which is between uh, h1 half and uh, energy critical again. So all these equations have some. Uh, yes, <laughs> thank you. So I, I want to talk about Klein Gordon here. So all, all these equations have in common to, to be well posed in some Sobolev space which is homogeneous or non-homogeneous. You can take the energy space or the, the critical uh, homogeneous space. You have small data uh, well-posedness and small data gives scattering. Small data here gives scattering. And, uh, and they are focusing equations, so you have some, uh, some Non-linear objects that are stationary waves, and uh, or maybe or traveling waves, also. and with all these characteristics, I want to ask the following question: If you consider a bounded solution a bounded non-scattering solution, what can happen asymptotically? The general conjecture, as you know, is so. I wanted to, I wanted to avoid the, the problem with the low black box. It's not so good. The general conjecture is a solid, is, is a, resolution into soliton. Which is that uh, any of these solutions, bonded and non-scattering, is asymptotically the sum of, uh, of solitons, plus uh, the, plus a linear, a linear solution. Uh, I want to consider a general large bonded solution. I don't want to do an analysis close to a, to a ground state. I want some general, uh, general results in this direction. So uh, there are very few uh, works on these types of equations in, in this direction. Uh, historically, uh, the, the soliton resolution you know, is known for a completely integral bounded system, KDV, and with completely different method. And it, it also falls out of uh, this kind of uh, equation, uh, situation. 
here it's, uh, it's an unstable solution resolution conjecture. So the solution here for this equation are unstable objects, and we're trying to classify some unstable uh, dynamics. Uh, so before going to, to my, to my uh, wave equation, let me cite the only uh, other work I know in this direction are some uh, works on tau on, uh, on NLS and uh, maybe the, the, the most, uh, there are two or three articles, and there is one in 2007 which is concerned with NLS in dimension uh, n larger than five and where it is uh, actual results in this direction. And I will compare this to, to what I'm, uh, to the part of the proof which is, which is general in my, uh, in my talk. I will compare it later. So now let me go back to, uh, to the nonlinear wave equation. equation there. Uh, well, I will very quickly recall some, uh, some characteristics of this equation. So you have local well posed net uh, in uh, h dot 1 times uh, L2. You have small data scattering. that the solution, which is small in this space, is global and asymptotically looks like, uh, looks like a linear solution. You have uh, some conserved quantities. Which are And let me insist on the fact that I am considering the focusing equation, so the sign here is minus. And uh, I want to consider also non radial solution, and another important conserved quantity is a momentum. And you also have a scaling. Uh, you have al already seen the scaling in previous talks, the last talk especially. So here it's uh, lambda to the n minus 2 minus 1 mu lambda t lambda x. If u is a solution, so is this quantity. And these two conserved quantities are invariant by the scaling as much as the energy scale. So what are the what are the particular objects? What are what what I will uh, use as solitons for this equation? Actually, you have some traveling wave wave solutions, and these traveling wave solutions are constructed from uh, solitary from stationary solutions. So first, let me quickly review what is known on stationary solutions. That is solution of the equation minus Laplace of two equal Q to the four N minus two Q on Rn with Q in H dot one of Rn. So the first example is an explicit one, and it's radial. It's one plus one over one plus x square n n minus two to the power. I always do <laughs> I'm used to do everything in dimension three, and in dimension three it's one half. I didn't, but this is it okay? Or? 
Okay, goodbye. Okay. Because in my notes it's something else, but I think there is a mistake in my notes. So. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's one over x at infinity in my notes. This is one over x at infinity in my notes. And, uh, well, second example. Well, you don't have to do it. Okay, so this, this w has a radial symmetry, and it's actually the only radially symmetric solution of the equation. Oh. It's in L2 in high dimension, but it's not in L2 in dimension uh, 3 and 4. It's just in H.1. And this is a general um, characteristic of the, of the solution of the equation. They, they have a polynomial decay at infinity. And in dimension 3, the, ty the typical decay is 1 over x. But you can also have one over x over x. But you never have exponential decay. So, sorry about this. It's my first, uh, first time with this type of board. If you have some questions, I So W is the unique stationary solution, which is radial up to scaling. And uh, well, historically, it was very important in the end of the 70s for the, to study the, the best consensus in the critical subordinate inequality. And at this point, some people thought it was the only uh, solution of the equation. But then uh, there was an article of Ding in 1984 which shows that there is an uh, infinitely many uh, solution with arbitrary large energy. So a uh, non radial solution. It was a variational argument which didn't give any information on the solution. Uh, now there are more recent works of uh, Del Pino Packard, Way, uh, Musso, and uh, maybe there are five people, I don't know, and collaborators. They stay on where they constructed more explicit examples of solution of this equation based on this W. But what you have to know is that there is absolutely no classification. No classification of the stationary solution. It's the only radial solution up to scaling. This is an easy OD resolution. So uh, uh, how do you construct traveling away from this? Well, you use uh, the Lorentz transform. So if Q is uh, stationary, and you take a small parameter L between, say, uh, between minus 1 and plus 1, uh, then you have the following solution, Q, L, T1, which is x1 minus t l over square root of my 1 minus x square x2 and i. This is a solution. This is the Lorentz transform of Q. And uh, it satisfies uh, QL e1 equa equals Q. So at uh, QL, the initial data, x minus t, l, t1. What is e1? It's just the unit vector in the direction. direction. And you can also construct, if you take any vector p in Rn, such that p is smaller than uh, 1, you can have some qp with uh, analogous formula that I don't want to write on the board today, uh, and which satisfy Q of t x equals Q of 0 x minus t p. So they're traveling at a speed which is slightly smaller than the speed of light, which is 1. OK, so now what is, uh, what is the conjecture here? I 
I consider u a solution of the equation. And with the following assumption, it says that u does not scatter. And the supremum, as t goes to the maximal existence of u, which I write t plus of u, of the norm of u in the energy space, is finite. So here, h is h1 dot times lt. Then uh, there exists some g larger than 1 and profile. QT1, QTJ, uh, four files which are actually traveling waves, which are exactly of, uh, of this type. Such that U of Tx is exactly the sum, so I should put number here also, the sum. All of these profiles, I think it's a bad idea to write here the main result. Well, it's a place where nobody's going to see anything. So <laughs> just go ahead. So it's not the main result in continuity, it's just a conjecture, but I should have practiced before. Okay. Okay. So there, there exist uh, profiles such that you of Tx is the sum. All of these profiles with some uh, some scaling parameter n minus n over two minus one to t j j. So I will put uh, all the all the displacement in, in the x variable for some co commodity reason plus dl of t plus a small o of 1 in h. So what is the L of t? It's a solution of the linear equation. And what are, uh, well, lambda j of t and xj of t, we imagine that they are parameters. Lambda j is positive, xj is a linear free. And uh, in the conjecture, I also uh, say that you have to have some, you have some, some decoupling between the parameters in the sense that uh, as t goes to t plus of u, uh, lambda j of t over lambda k of t, or xj of t minus x k, k of t with a good scaling goes to Plus of u when g is not equal to Okay, so everything is clear here. Small
one profile, and in this case, you have to have lambda 1 of t goes to 0, of t goes to t plus of t. Of course, lambda 1 of t is smaller than t plus t, uh, t and it's uh, lesser order. Because the profiles are not compact compactly supported. And uh, you have also solutions constructed by Dunninger and Figure in the same spirit, but with t plus equal plus to infinity. And in this case, so you still have j equal to 1. And in this case, lambda 1 of t has can go to 0 or can also go to infinity. And I must say that in all these cases, the profile is a, a ground state w. So I have written uh, more or less on the board uh, as the, the power mistake. So here I think it's, uh, it's uh, interesting. You can have a solution spreading out at infinity or concentrating at infinity uh, in the global case. And what you have to observe also is that uh, the fact that there is a bond does not exclude uh, blow up, which is type 2 blow up. We've already talked about this in other talks. OK, so what are, uh, what are the results now? So I want to insist in my talk on the non-radial case, but uh, in 2012, we have solved the, the radial case. We have proved that this conjecture is true in the radial case. In the radial case, if n equal to 3. Uh, let me say very quick a few words about the proof it uses some uh, energy channel of energy arguments uh, which are very specific so which were mentioned uh, by Benjamin uh, Benjamin Dunson in his talk yesterday and uh, well they're very specific to the radial case in this form and they, they have uh, they have full power in dimension three because in dimension three you can go you can transform the linear equation to the one-dimensional linear equation by the tensor variable that we have uh, shown us. And uh, well, it's, we, we don't have many hope to adapt the truth, uh, at least to the non-radial case. Uh, this is the techni technicalities. But what is behind this is that in, in, uh, in the radial case, W is unit. And in the non-radial case, it is not unit. And you, we, see, we see this uniqueness in the truth. So now, with, with the non-radial case, we have no classification of anything. So we, we know that the proof cannot work in the same way. So the next goal will be to show the non-radial case, but we have very, very few results in this direction. So and that's what I want to show you today. But so far, even in, uh, in dimension 5, uh, in for radial solution, 
nothing is known no more than uh, from what I'm going to write. U satisfying the assumption of the conjecture. Then there exists uh, a sequence of time going to plus of U. A sequence of scaling parameters, the sequence of translation parameters, and uh, traveling wave QT such that the limit has n goes to infinity, so I need some large R to small R and I'm going to write a limit in H1 log so I rescale my solution X plus lambda N X minus EQ DX is so I have one one profile for one sequence of time and the convergence is locally in H1. So at this point, I should give some uh, historical uh, uh, citations and uh, references. Uh, so it, this type of result is known on, on wave maps, actually. And uh, well, in the radial case, in the result of Kuber, 2003. Uh, so it's two-dimensional uh, wave maps with symmetries. And uh, uh, when I cite this article, everybody tell me that it's really, it's really uh, there is an article 10 years before of Christo Dulu and Tavida Arzade with uh, much of the proof. Which I should cite also Christo Dulu and Tavida Arzade. And uh, in the general case, it's exactly the result of uh, Katarin and Fairbanks. Fairbanks. So this is a lot more recent. I guess the date of publication is 2012 for general web. So of course, this is very far from the, the conjecture I wrote in the beginning. Uh, but there is an article of code which goes farther than this article of Kruver in the radial case and really in the direction of the conjecture. Uh, it shows the conjecture I wrote for first sequence. the references. Uh, so now I want to give you one information about this. If you compare this to the conjecture, in the conjecture, so you have a lot of scaling parameters. And this one is the smallest one. My proof, the proof of this result, will see the smallest scaling parameter, which is the fastest concentration. I can call it the lambda one of Tn and which is, uh, let's say, the fastest speed of concentration. Of course, since you can, uh, you can um, 
decouple the, the, the profiles by, by phase translation, you can have more than one faster scaling parameter. And I didn't want to write the more general result, but I can give you a result where you see all the fastest uh, profiles, all the fastest concentration profiles uh, with an adequate norm. And so, next, let me tell you uh, how does the proof work. So it's uh, it has uh, some of the proof from other talks uh, for this conference. Uh, it's approved by uh, concentration or compactness. Compactness. So the compactness argument, as it is, it's usual in this type of thing. The compactness argument is fairly general and works for many equations. Maybe all the equations I wrote are at least all the equations I wrote in this field, and maybe a lot of others. And the rigidity argument is going to be very specific to the equation. Uh, before going further, I'm trying really to explain uh, more of the proof. Let me tell you what is new in this compactness argument. So usually, uh, for example, in the talk of intervention uh, or in the talk of Benjamin Dolce, some uh, critical elements were constructed as a consequence of a minimality argument using some compactness, uh, compactness uh, tools. Uh, minimality argument on a set of solutions. So you have a set of solutions, say the set of non-scattering solutions, and you take the smallest non-scattering solution in some sense. And the smallest uh, non-scattering solution has a, has a particular compactness property. Uh, what the novelty in this uh, compactness argument is that you have only one solution, which is U, this solution. And I will do a compactness argument on the set of all sequences, Tn, all sequences of time, Tn, going to C plus N. Okay, and as a consequence of this, uh, of this minimality argument, I will also uh, choose a compact profile with the state of the So there's a question to take that. Okay, so now I, uh, I still have some time to give a set of proof. Also, all of this rely on a, on a certain type of solution which are solutions with a compact trajectory. In, uh, in our articles with uh, Frank and Carlos, we call these solutions with the compactness property. So I will define this compactness. Which I will abbreviate as CT. What is it? It is a solution. Such that the set K. So I have some scaling and uh, some uh, translation. The scaling I call uh, lambda of T and the translation X of T. And you have the same for the time uh, derivative is translated. And T is in the maximal existence, interval of existence of U. This set has compact closure in the energy space. And this for some good choice of lambda of T, X of T. This type of solution has been known for a long time. Uh, I think the first reference I know historically is a, is a preprint of Blangetas on Mel, which was never published, and which goes back to 1999. And 
then there is an article of uh, Marcel and Merle on KDD about uh, UV, UV theorem on KDD. Why is this type of solution on KDD also appear? essential tool to solve the L2 uh, NLS mass critical problem or energy critical problem of the containing uh, energy critical uh, wave equation also uh, in works of uh, Dennis Mayer and uh, Philippe Tao Edition for the L2 critical problem. Kerani also for the L2 critical problem. So, uh, so as compact to the image, maybe I finish this quantum. On down key, x on key. So what is the rigidity part? So I will write again the conjecture. Rigidity conjecture. Is that uh, the compactness property implies that you is a key. What is the problem with this type of uh, conjecture in the focusing case is that usually you know how to do this using some monotonicity formula and most of this monotonicity formula works below the ground state. So if you're below the ground state uh, in some of the work I, I, I cited, uh, for example also in the work of Dod Dodson for the uh, mass critical equation, you can show this conjecture. But what I want is something in full generality. I want uh, this solution in full generality and actually I, I I know very few uh, things in this direction. Uh, so what we can do for the wave equation is to prove this in the radial case. And some weaker form in the non-radial case. What kind of weaker form? Actually, we can show it up to subsequence. If you have a solution with the compactness property, then you converge for a sequence of time and up to some modulation to, uh, to a stationary, uh, to a solitary wave. Okay. And this is perfect for sure. This kind of result. And actually, we have the strong form under some non-degeneracy assumption, which is uh, elliptic uh, with non-degeneracy. So before going to the compactness part, I just want to tell you why it works, especially for this equation and for no other equation, uh, as far as I know, uh, except maybe on wave map, if you try to show this, but you usually don't need to show this. Is that you have the good monotonicity formula, which is something like that. So I, I will not put the constant here and here. But this is, with a good constant here, it's exactly VTU square. And this is specific if you look at all the semilinear wave equation on, of, on Rn. This is specific to the energy critical wave equation. So if you have a solution with the compactness property, uh, if you can exclude self-similar blobs, but you know how to do this, then you will use this identity truncated to get some, some information of the time derivative so that you go to a stationary position. And if you're non-radial, you play with the momentum to get some analogy and to show that you go to, to a solitary way. So now let me talk about uh, the compactness part. So what is this general compactness uh, result I, I promised in the beginning? It is the following two positions. So I will write it again for the nonlinear wave equation. I take a solution that U be as in the conjecture. 
Ven, de Big Beast. Y en, going to two places of you. Land a en. X en. Touch that. You. So, you rescaled. You of two en. Goes weekly to. So, I will put an arrow here to say that it's U, this is U, is a proper rescaling. Goes weekly to some V0, V1, where V0, V1 is an initial data. of a solution V satisfying the compactness property. And this part is uh, something general. I will, I will describe very quickly the proof. But it doesn't depend on any property of the wave equation that I'm considering. The problem is that for any other equation, it doesn't give you much because we don't know we don't know how to classify solution with the compactness property. Uh, but you can try to get some interesting results, and uh, that's where uh, the work of Tao in 2007 is quite interesting. So it's for NLS in high dimension, and in high dimension, you have very good dispersive estimates. And it directly shows that any solution which is bonded and non-scattering, so solution as in, in my conjecture, is a linear solution plus something that approach the set of solution satisfying the compactness property. So this set of solution, uh, which acts as, as a compact attractor uh, for the equation, you have the linear part, and then this set of compact solution, which is compact, which is the bonded solution. Of the solution, so it's it's the analog of this, but for all time, you don't have this two n. It's for all time, or, or, you, or let us say for all sequence, uh, you have this this property. But what this shows and the work of Tao shows is that the new difficulty is to classify all the solution. For this, we have very few, very few. Things. So now let me uh, give a, try to give a proof of the of the proposition. So the, the important tool is the profile decomposition for the equation. In this case, it's given by uh, Bauri and Girard. So if Tn goes to T plus of u, you can write, uh, maybe after uh, extraction of a subsequence, you can write u of Tn as a sum of Profiles. So, what are profiles? They're just solutions of the equation. Uh, Ugn of uh, 0 x, so it's u of tn x, plus some discursive part. So, you, could, you should in your ignore this uh, part. And look at this Ujn of Tx is some rescaled solution of T minus Tjn lambda Gn x minus xjn over lambda g. So there's like wave packets for the solution. 
And uh, this gives you an approximation of the solution for small size. So let us assume to simplify. It's really uh, to simplify the proof. Of course, it's not an assumption which is not reasonable. That uh, U1 is the only non scattering solution. that all the other profile UG, J larger than two scatter. Then you have the following approximation of the solution. U of Tn plus T x is the sum of the solution. UG N of T x plus the dispersive part, which actually acts as a linear evolution. And this, uh, this approximation is true if, you're, if you take into, uh, into account that you are, uh, the time is not too big with respect to the scaling of this equation. So precisely, uh, I will also assume that T11, T1 is zero to simplify everything. And so you have this if T is smaller than T lambda 1n or some T smaller than T plus of T1. Okay, so you have some approximation, and what is interesting is that the range of the approximation is given by the first profile, by the only non-scattering profile, by the non-scattering. So now I will, if Tn is a sequence, I have some profile U1, and I will denote by definition E of Tn as the energy This profile you have the solution of the nonlinear wave equation, which is the only profile that doesn't scatter, and I, I take the energy of it. And now I consider all the sequence Tn, and along along all this sequence, I take the minimum of the energy of Tn. minimum of an old sequence Tn of this E of Tn. When I say old sequence Tn, it's all sequence Tn going to T plus of E times T of E. Okay, and what is the proposition? Is that the following step, the following set is not empty. If I consider the sequence Tn such that E of Tn equal the mi minimum energy. This is not empty. And if Tn n is, is in this set, then as you guess, maybe U1 satisfies more or less closes the proof. So let me explain how, how you get this. Uh, just raise your hand so don't put things on the blackboard because it would be very interesting again. Uh, okay, let us assume that it's not empty. I take something in, in S0 and I look at the profile U1. So if it doesn't have the compactness pro property, you can write another profile decomposition of U1 and it will divide in at least two parts. And these two parts with, uh, will have a lesser energy, of course. And then you will find another sequence for which, using this approximation, this is the subtile way, you will find another sequence for which the energy is lesser. So the assumption of minimal energy blocks everything and says that the profile must have the compactness property. You cannot have a profile decomposition of this Q1 with more than one profile, which is very close to the usual minimal argument, uh, but what I think is interesting is that you can do this only on one, one fit solution. So let me uh, say a few words about the general case. Uh, here I suppose that there is only one profile. When you have more than one profile, you must also maximize the number of profiles and minimize the scaling parameters, lambda 1n. So you have actually three maximum minimization arguments, but the general argument is uh, 
Oh. Well, you have to clean everything around it. So you have this, you have this profile, and then you have all, all the all the sketching profile. You know, you do not need one. You have to clean all of this, and then uh, you don't know how to do this, and you don't know how to show, and you don't know how to show that the other profiles are are also positioned with the compactness. This is the most concentrated one, so you could imagine that you, you cut off something. And I mean, there is there are some hopes, but so far we don't have the technical tools to do this. And we also have this problem of sequence. I mean, it's not for all time. So. For a sequence, no, I really don't know how to do this. It might be technical. A mess. I mean, you have a lot of profiles, you have a lot of scaling, different scaling. Maybe it's just uh, maybe in a few years we'll get used to it and look it. Uh, but so far, I, <laughs> I just look at this. So as a, as a last speaker, I want to thank the organizers for this very nice congress. And uh, well, I, think I, I was very happy to be here, but I guess it's the same for you. It was uh, really, really good. Thank you very much.